be me. Pathfinder game with a group of 10. DM making things large scale because there's fucking 10 players. Wants to build a campaign around the party so it makes sense. Group throwing ideas and voting on it. Decide we want a campaign that is starting to see firearms. Needed to be metal as fuck. The gods hear my cries and grant me an idea. Party is more than okay with this plan. Introduce it to the DM. Gives us the green light. Party prepares to change the way the world goes to war. All half giants ported over from 3.5. Kept the heavy lifting and stomp. Make their cultural theme Maori because fuck yeah. All gunslinger alchemist. Dump all our skills into engineering and crafting. Assign roles to the team. Three commanders. Three gunners. Four bombers. Commanders dump into siege commander engineer master engineer. Gunners focus on siege gunner and firearms. Bombers put it all in alchemy and crafting. We are the gargantuan guns grenadiers. We bring the thunder. Half giant clan with a love of guns that developed after working alongside a dwarven engineering guild. Travel the world as mercenaries to pay off our rather massive debt to the guild. Commanders and gunners have double hack butts. Bombers have culverin. The crown jewels of the company are the three siege guns. Betsy the 30 pound huge cannon. Bell the 30 pound huge bombard. And Bertha the 50 pound gargantuan bombard. Betsy and Bell take three of us to work each. Bertha takes four. B.I. Hacker. Siege commander of Bertha. Get an offer from a local lord who is having neighbor issues. First mission is to prove our worth by clearing out a military camp. Let's do it. Wagon train our way down the roads. No oxes we just pull the fucking things ourselves. Three for the guns and two just for ammo. See a patrol coming down the road towards us. We're ready. Turn the wagons around and load up the guns as they approach. By the time they get close we're standing in a line in front of the girls. Easily 50 men in front of us. Demand to know what we're doing here. Thanks to our stunningly low charisma roles we tell them pretty bluntly that we are on our way to demolish a campsite. They form up in a shield wall in front of us. We had prepared. Led the crew in a harker right in front of the oncoming whim. Soldiers aren't too thrilled about charging into the line of half naked half giants who are currently losing all of their shit. Commanders pass or will save and let them in. Wait until they get almost into melee range. Finish the haka by all 10 of us using our daily stomp at the same time and screaming at the top of our lung. Stomps knock everyone in the front rows prone. Crew dashes back behind beside the cannons. Let a rip. Three loads of blast shot at virtually point blank. Follow it up with a volley from the handguns. Hurl bombs into what's left and charge with warhammer muskets. Not much left by the time we reach them. Nothing left by the time we were done. Load up all the equipment and shredded scrap metal. Bury bodies in the bomb craters. Take a group nap on the side of the road. Need to be ready for the plan. Set up camp as the sun is going down about a mile from the encampment. Load all the guns again. Give them a nice opening salvo for a bit then proceed to phase 2. Bombard the fort the entire night until we run out of ammo. Blow through 230 pound shots and 50 50 pound shots. 8500 pounds of powder, iron, and stone. Approximately 10,000 GP worth of ammo. About every 2 minutes throughout the entire night something got smashed or blown to bits. Pack up when the sun rises and roll into what's left of the fort. Not a whole lot. Seems everyone either got killed or left. On the bright side everyone who ran was in too much of a hurry to take things with them. We are smart and know that weapons and armor are worth a lot more pound for pound than cannonballs. Have a chart already made of the worth of items on a gold to weight ratio. DM is horrified as we start looking for dead archers in those deliciously light bows of theirs. Long bows are worth 25 GP a pound. Short bows 15. Leave the arrows behind. Not worth enough for the weight. Methodically pick through the ruins of the fortress in search of the most weight efficient weapons. Avoid polyams and maces like the plague. Leave our fine iron cannonballs sitting in the mud. Great weapons and chainmail left to rust. Shields make us cringe. Grudgingly go back for the swords once we find some of the horses that escape to help us carry more. Finally leave with 80,000 GP and magical items. Gold, bars, various plate types, clothes, farm animals, and swords. 70k in profit and we haven't even gotten paid yet. DM is disgusted. Get back to the lord. Loves our work. Brings out the money chest. Gives us 10k for demolishing an entire army and a fortress. MFW, barely covered the cost of our ammo. DM points out that mercenaries got most of their cash from looting historically. Can't argue there. Send 50k back to the dwarfs to pay off half our debt. Pimp ourselves out with upgraded weapons and clothes. Next job is to provide arty support for the lord's army. 
besieging a castle and he wants the best. Asks what we want for payment. Demand 10 carts and first dibs on loot. Deal. No this neighboring kingdom must be loaded based on the last fight. Never asked why. Found out when we got there. Massive walls. Towers with catapults. Wizards out the ass. No good way in. Guess who's in charge of making a way in. Fire at the walls. Nope. Fire over the walls. Nope. Fire under the walls. Nope. Some sort of magic barrier. Only lets through people as we could see from the flying wizards all over the place. Bell's commander Tangeroa looks at me. He has a plan. Middle of the night again. Spent all day firing Bertha at the magical wall. Using extra thick 300 pounds metal shells. Wizards occasionally throw insults at the savages for wasting their time. Don't care. We weren't trying to get through. Oh no. We were getting them used to being fired at. More importantly. We were tracking the shots until we found the one we wanted. Finally get everything prepared. Bombers make sure we are all drugged up and sufficiently protected. Get all our weapons and ammo bagged up for safety. Get our order sorted. Bombers first. Then gunners. Then commanders. Our craziest bomber Tay is the first over the top. One by one we fly over the walls and directly into the river running through the middle of the city. Pull ourselves out of the water and nod to each other. Operation Giant Mess begins. Start rigging bombs all over the city. Make sure to put extra ones at the mages building cuz fuck those guys. Book it to the gatehouse. Knock the guards out and get a hold of the controls. Fancy winch system to slowly lower the gate so it doesn't break. Can't blow it up or nobody can get it. Wait until the bombs start going off before we activate it. Run outside in front of the gatehouse. Form double ranks. Need to keep the guards back until the lord gets off his ass to get the army over here. Flood of town watch coming down the streets. Perform another harker with the storm. Fire like crazy into the rushing hordes of men. Grenades and bullets and smoke everywhere. Can't see anything just keep shooting. Enemy can't see us either so win win. Finally our idiots show up to do something for once. Counter charge and storm the keep. Force a surrender. Drop everything and start looting the city. Make sure to steal all the magic items and books we can from the wizards cuz fuck them and their magic. Ride off on our carts before the sun even comes up. Show up a week later at the dwarven hold. Looking damn fine. Pay off the rest of our debt in gold on the spot. Dwarfs throw a party for their friends and the fact that they just made a little ton of gold. Before they break out the drinks 10 more carts roll in. Each is loaded with exactly 1 ton of gold. 10 tons is 1 million GP. Dwarfs are practically drooling. Engineering buddy asks what it's all for. Bertha wants a big sister. And that's how we got Buttercup the 1 ton shell firing great bombard. How bad as you feel when you break 1k points and get another gold? Be me. Pathfinder with the boys from Gunslinger's Grenadiers. Still the Gargantuan Guns Grenadiers. Ran a minor mercenary gig for a local noble to blow time. Made plenty of coin and turned the countryside into a recreation of Verdun. Waiting for the dwarfs to finish our pride and joy. Return to the stronghold with our usual small mountain of weight efficient loot. Throw another party with the dwarfs before they unveil their masterpiece. She's beautiful. Celebrate her creation by test firing at a nearby mountain. All of us spend the next 10 rounds packing all the powder in and hefting the one ton explosive shell up and into the barrel. Laugh when the gargantuan carriage she's on starts to tilt. Light the fuse and plug our ears. Crit and do over 2000 damage on her test shot. Recoil destroys the wagon and causes her to slide backwards 20 feet. Nearly squishes Marksman Toyri. Do the math on price. We can make black powder for 100 GP per 5 pound keg enough for 100 doses of powder. Takes 500 pounds to get those balls going at about 1500 FPS. 10,000 GP a shot. Worth every copper. Dwarfs use us as a fantastic opportunity to make a buttload of money and give a nearby enemy the finger. Sent into the northern mountains to start hunting down dragons. Takes a full team of oxen to pull her her new and improved reinforced wagon. Carriage is now almost entirely made of metal. Have an entire caravan just for buttercup's ammo. Slowly trudging our way through the mountain passes. Attacked at random by orcs and goblinoid tribes that want to take buttercup. Spaces are too tight to use the cannons. Need to resort to our reasonably sized double hack butts and culverins. Slowly cleave our way through the mountainside. Eventually reach the cave of Red Dragon 1. Debated alternatives to dragging cannons into a tight space where the blast pressure could kill us. Settled on dumping one load of buttercup's ammo into the cave instead. 100 kegs of powder. 
Each keg does 5d6 fire damage in a 20 foot burst. Toss in an explosive cannonball for good measure. Roll it all down into the cave system. DM tries to point out that red dragons are immune to fire damage. We're not killing it with fire. Start our long trek back to another mountain. Go to be at a safe distance. Fire Buttercup and Betsy simultaneously. Buttercup fired directly into the cave entrance. Betsy hit above it to cause an avalanche. Cave entrance is sealed by avalanche right before the main charge goes off. Send a message to the dwarfs to bring an excavation crew before we go after the bigger one. Total estimated cost 22,000 gold. Dragons hoard 108,000 gold and salvage. The DM's face priceless. Great whim wasn't quite as easy. Found out pretty damn fast that there was a group of half giants blowing up mountains for giggles. Made sure it had its pet troll tribe on watch and it was in the air. Most are dead or rooted by the time they get within small arms range. Dragon makes sure to stay on the move while Betsy takes pot shots at it. Bell and Bertha are acting as impromptu AA guns by firing explosives and grape shit. Not doing a whole lot and it's too hard to hit a risk missing with Buttercup. Made the fatal mistake of not protecting the caravan. One fire breath later Buttercup lost all her spare ammo and we had another landslide on our hands. Only what's in the barrel left for her. Need to make it count. Tay the mad bomber has a plan. Wants to recreate his stunt from the siege. Lob him out of bell three turns later. Survives collision with the dragon and goes for the wings. Screams a harker in tribute to lost Hebrew as they hurtle towards the ground. I die. I die. I live. I live. Uses his half giant strength to yank on the wings and roughly guide their descent. It's not pretty and the dragon is fighting it the entire time. Doesn't need to be a perfect landing though. Clings to its stomach as the earth closes in. Succeeds in his mission and crashes into the ground without dying. Jumps off and runs back to the rest of us through the cloud of dust. Wim pulls itself upright and roars with enough force to push the dust and debris away. It didn't like what it revealed. Dwarven holds are all rather thrilled with our work. Throw another multi-day party due to the hilarious amount of gold and treasure we retrieved from the horde. Also killed the evil red dragons but more importantly lots of gold. Get an offer for any creation within the power of the guilds. Decided we didn't enjoy fighting things in the air when we were on the ground. Tay said it was a lot more fun when you were up there too. We decided on a commission that would let us test that theory with him. Be me. Pathfinder with the gang, still the GGG, decided that our landbound status was increasingly problematic as it limited our travel speed, more importantly it limited our looting capacity and business range. Contracts outside our operating range are contracts not being fulfilled. Contracts not being fulfilled are piles of money that aren't being given to us. Can't have that. Commission the engineers guild for their greatest creation since Buttercup. Take a couple minor contracts to pass the time. Wipe out every sign of dragons and trolls within a 100 mile range. Collapse 3 mountain. Dwarfs hurry up construction and finish before we turn the mountain range into a plains. Finish their finest work just as we get back from our last mission. It's got the works. Elemental engines. Runic plating and controls. Enchanted elven wood for the hull we didn't buy that but screw those pointy eared assholes. Gold plated cup holders giant sized. Christen it or Hichiro after the Maori god of meteors. Get Betsy the 30 pound cannon a twin sister Betty too so she isn't lonely. Load all 5 of the girls on boat. Pack the hull full of hundreds of bags of holding all filled with powder and our smaller shots. Rest is filled with the big balls. Nearly kill ourselves taking off but we make it. Sail off dramatically into the sunset at full sail. Instantly get pulled over by Sky Patrol for speeding in a restricted airspace. The officer was the most anal retentive warforged I have ever seen. After paying for over two dozen tickets and receiving a copy of the first time flyer's guide we sail off at a more acceptable pace. Dock at a nearby human city. Airships are still extremely rare so we have to park in the actual water dock. Blow over a few smaller boats from the wind. Got a lot of angry looks but boy did we impress the lord. Blows his mind when the most cutting edge ship and weapon system in the world is being crewed by a bunch of half giants with guns. Most people have only seen basic muskets and here we are with flying cannons. Lord knows what he has on his hands. Get hired on the spot to start raiding patrols and caravans of a neighboring country. Agree in exchange for an 100% share of loot. Shake hands and fly off. Flip four more boats and knock the lord off the dock during takeoff. After two weeks the rival country has lost contact with all merchants and military patrols outside of their borders. Send out a new wave with the same results. Few survivors get back to report what's going on. 
sends out a wave armed with ballistas and catapults. Lol nope. Sends out another with wizards and fly scrolls. After a catastrophic boarding attempt they decide that was an awful idea. Country can't figure out how to stop the screaming madmen who descend from the clouds blow up everything and then fly away. Going bankrupt and they only have one option left. They empty the last of their coffers to bribe a dragon clan to start guarding their armies. Meet up with the Lord's army to push into their land and get the war over within one fight. Ground forces are slightly in our favor. Air forces is us versus a great whim and four adults. Or Hachurua and the dragons fly out and clash before either army has even formed up. Blast one of the adults out of the sky first round with 2000 pounds of grape shit from Buttercup. Rest of the adults are smart enough not to let us reload and board the ship. Wim just hangs back and blasts us with fire because he is a prick. Resort to rocking the ship as much as possible to knock the dragons off. Tay the mad bomber gets an idea. Uses his turns to run around tying rope to everyone. As soon as the last of us are secured he tells me to flip. As we all dangle upside down in the air we finally have enough room to shoot at them again. Knock two more out of the sky. While Tay grapples with the last one we reload buttercup upside down suspended by ropes. Fire her on the starboard side with so much powder that it unflips the ship. Tay's grapple ends when the arm he was holding stops being attached to the dragon. Great wind glares at us while we regain our footing. Turns and glares even harder at the enemy country's king. You didn't pay me enough for this. Could've powered Manhattan with all the watts produced on the battlefield. Great Wim flies off. Enemy army surrenders before they even get into combat. Drop what we are doing and descend to the Lord. Literally tripping over each other to jam the contract in his face. His army didn't engage. We did all the work. Nationhood bankrupted itself paying for the dragons. We had 100% looting rights. And that's how we repoed an entire country. If you haven't already check out my Redbubble portfolio, you might just find something you like. Just stop! Just stop it! Stop! No! Just stop it! It's time to stop! It's time to stop, okay? No more! Where the fuck are your parents? Who are your parents? I'm gonna call Child Protective Services. It's time to stop!